Hey guys, Alec Lehrman here. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. We are on our third and final episode of the Justin Canavan Licks and Tricks series. If you guys have been enjoying yourself so far, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. On this final episode, I'm going to let Justin kind of do his thing, and he kind of just talks unfiltered about what he, or how he approaches the guitar. In this episode, we're gonna to touch on three topics. The first is vocal phrasing on the guitar. The second is five and six note patterns on the guitar, and Justin does this very uniquely. Unlike Eric Johnson, he does five note patterns, alternate picking, which is unique, and we can take a look at that in a bit. And also, Justin's unique approach to chromaticism. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and here we go. What about some uh, kind of like stylistic phrasings of maybe yourself now moving away from Benson? Um, so we could do like, I mean, I try, I've been working on lately trying to get as much like a, I kind of find myself singing to myself all the time. So really trying to get some like, you know, just little like vocal inflections and, you know, almost into every note, not like necessarily intentionally, but um kind of gives it more of like a vocal sound. So a lot of it, can you can even move it around on one string. Oh, that was pretty sloppy. Phrasing wise, I guess it kind of just comes out naturally. I mean, I try to have like a, at least somewhat of a laid back feel, but. Um. Cool, so also over this same chord, the C minor nine, you know, kind of that same pentatonic stuff, you can use different patterns, you know, like sixes are a pretty common one. But uh, the fives kind of get a nice like overlapping sound. So if you're in two, three, four. So same thing will end it on the downbeat. So basically you're going. So same thing with the five. So you can do it in different positions. Right. And are you alternate picking that, all that? All of it. Yeah. So straight, yeah. So same thing, all, all straight alternating, and then just finding the right fingering for each one. But can you can you maybe play the, that six lick up to tempo? So. So that'd be the sixes and fives. Definitely the most comfortable ones. This box tends to be the easiest mm -hmm. one right here. So just add in the blues mm. one note to get it to land on the one there. So yeah, that kind of works right there. Um, let's see. So for the five, the sixes, I guess would be. pretty much move it around the neck anywhere you really want to and you can work it over different chords so we could work over the D yeah. really it could work over the E work over it let's see what else you can do yeah maybe not actually yeah you can do it over the G pretty nicely too can you show us some licks uh, incorporating chromaticism Sure, so same thing over here, so like on the E chord, um, you know, any like, pretty much any four note cell, even whether they're scale or not, you can kind of always do, so this is basically starting on your fifth of the E minor nine. So you can kind of keep that going. And then another way to arrange it, so I was kind of inspired by this Mike Stern lick that he did where he took these notes, and I just thought it was so much more interesting than going. So, kind of to rearrange the licks like 
that, you know, four notes uh, cell instead of doing it straight up. So this would be kind of the same idea of just like rearranging them in a way that's not so, I don't know, it almost feels like it's kind yeah. of shifty. Um, so same thing here. So and then you can kind of keep it going. So you're basically thinking about it as like a E minor. And you can keep it going too, or even if you wanted to resolve it. So same kind of thing there. So this is like a bebop dominant lick, classic jazz lick. There. So that little cell is kind of cool for that. You can kind of keep it going as an overlapping thing too. Back to the D. Um, let's see what else. Um, so that cell's like that. So any, pretty much any like one, two, three cell you have in your scale. Same thing here. So same same uh, key. Yeah. So you can kind of keep them going. So that's kind of the, just that same uh, three note cell there, shifted around in different spots. And then you know you can finger it however you want. I just find this to be a little awkward, so I kind of just shift it. Um, yeah, one more time. So, is it still going? Yep. Sweet. All right, so let's see. So that would be like a one, two, three. So this cell, um, so it's kind of a similar thing where it's a different four-note cell, but still a four-note block. So any of this would be like a one, flat, two, minor, three lick. You can kind of combine the two. Exactly, but close enough. Um, let's see what else. So you can find that pretty much with a major scale here. Kind of just connecting the same. This is the same block right here. Same with these. Get the open string in there, but so those are a couple of the chromatic ones. So then, and then kind of just combining them, you can really, you know, if you extend them, you can really go kind of go for a while. So a little Benson like at the end. But yeah, so pretty much kind of, that was kind of connecting, I don't even remember what I did, but connecting all those mm -hmm. little, little blocks, because they kind of just flow into each other. If you look at it, like little four note cells or instead of like a really long, crazy thing, because it's really just a couple of tiny little things. And then the lick at the end. Um, yeah, so let me think for any other chromatics. Yeah, and then kind of just a classic. that same thing I did before, but moving, so you could really use any of those cell, any of those four note blocks and just do, so yeah, I'm actually learning stuff right now, uh, so yeah, pretty much as a, you know, a bunch of different, you know, various things you can do with like a pretty much a small little normal scale, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you found some of that information helpful. Justin is available for private Skype lessons and I can post his email down below. You can also follow him on social media and Instagram down below. He tours with an artist called Jamila Woods and also has his own group called Low Spark and he plays very frequently around Chicago and also does a lot of touring. So you can kind of follow him and keep up with what he's up to. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in and I'll catch you around. Take care.